Hello everyone, we are students from IIT Roorkee and this is a short presentation which explains some of the aspects of our course project, self, the self-balancing bike, along with some insights which we thought align with our course. This PPT will be presented by myself, Surya and Rajiv and Mohit. First, we will be going over some of the basic aspects of the project and get a sense of the various components of the bike and then we'll give an overview of the sensors used and we'll try to explain the working principle of the principles of these sensors and later on we'll move on to some of the more finer details such as the simulations control theory some of the programming implementations electronics many other and many of the challenges we face throughout the project each cycle utilizes a combination of various variables in order to stay balanced some of the most important ones are gyroscopic effect the spinning wheels act as gyroscopes, gy generating forces that resist changes, resist changes in the bike's orientation. This effect becomes more stronger as we reach higher speeds and contributes to the bike's stability. Another important one is the angular momentum conservation. When a bike is in motion, its wheels possess angular momentum. With, as long as the wheels are spinning, they resist changes in the orientation, thus preventing the bike from falling over. There are various more such there are various more such effects like the geometry of the bike's fork, the wheel alignment, and more factors such as the weight distribution, tire deformation, and rider's input. In case of a self-balancing bike, there has to be a functioning control mechanism that keeps this unstable system stable. In order to the the main balancing component in our bike is the reaction field. So the physics behind it is pretty simple. When the bike tilts towards the side, we make a reaction. We make the reaction wheel rotate in the same direction to produce a reaction torque to counter the fall. We'll add some references in case you want to follow up on the physics behind. Many of the principles that we have used in our bike can be applied to applications where you need to counteract unwanted momentum. Reaction wheels are also a common method for attitude control for small spacecrafts and satellites. So, why are we doing this project for the instrumentation course? Well, we took this project because we understood and implemented many of the theoretical aspects of our course in real life. We had a lot of sessions in order to develop the control algorithm which we have, which we have deployed. We went through a lot of challenges which a typical instrumentation projects would have such as in 3D printing, many of the bike's parts and well, uh, our bike's wheel ended up being too flat and we had to go through a lot of motors in order to find just the right one to fit our specifications and many other issues which we will discuss in the latter si slides. We also learned a lot about team collaboration and how to divvy up work amongst ourselves. And finally the most important aspect is that we got to get, we got to get our uh, hands on ha hardware and solve a real life problem. Okay, so let's move on with the uh, discussion of the sensors. So uh, the IMU sensor. The uh, IMU's full form is inertial measurement unit. Its components are accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers. We'll be explaining each of these, each of them in detail. Our goal is to get the speed and angular orientation of the bike over time. We'll be extracting acceleration, rate of rotation, and changes in the surrounding magnetic field, and then information from these components are then fused using inbuilt fusion algorithms to obtain the orientation and track motion of the object. IMU is constructed using microelectromechanical systems uh, that combine mechanical and electrical components mm -hmm. into structures that are only a few microns apart. The use of this incredible technology allows many different sensors to be included in such small packages. Uh, so accelerometers and gyroscopes. Uh, accelerometers detect linear motion. Gyroscopes use Cori the Coriolis effect to detect angular velocity. It should be noted that accelerometers do not report the speed of the object and similarly gyroscopes do not report the angular orientation of the object. They report the acceleration and angular velocity. We need to integrate the obtained data from the sensors over time to find the speed and angular orientation. I'll be going over the working principle of accelerome accelerometers now. Accelerometers are based on capac capacitive sensing and are made up of microscopic structures with a few key components. The yellow colored head shaped structure with the sense fingers extending from it is the seismic mass. 
it is tether tethered to the substrate at both ends and can move back and forth between the tethered ends. We measure the difference in the charges that form in the bottom plate of the capacitor. As the mass moves back and forth, the charge stored between the fingers changes, changing the capacitance. The change in capacitance is then recorded and passed through amplification, signal, signal conditioning, and then converted to a digital signal using analog to digital conversion. It is hard to detect using a single capacitor, so we use multiple electrodes all connected in a parallel configuration, allowing the system to be more accurate. This is for any one dimension. For multiple dimension, for multiple directions, IMU sensors have three of them at 90 degree angles. On to the working of uh, gyroscopes. A ma mass is forced to accelerate in this configuration with a frequency of several kilohertz. And when the system is rotated, the oscillation oscillating mass will experience a Coriolis force that will move it to the left or to the right, depending on the vibration direction. Displacement is then used to calculate the angular velocity. Gyroscopes are based on Coriolis force forces, but since it's not directly related to our course, I'll leave up some references in case anyone is interested in learning more about Coriolis forces. Uh, there is a condition for this to work, since linear, since linear acceleration also con contributes to the displacement, their accuracy will be compromised in case of a high linear acceleration. And then in that case, we would have to opt for an optical gyroscope. Uh, this is a screenshot of the IMU data. So we are using ROS to control the bot. These are the topics which we are using to send the commands and for the communication we are writing ROS nodes to manage these topics and will gather, gather information through these ROS nodes from the topics and then send it to the output control. For example, this is the data from the IMU sensor. The orientation in, comes in the form of quaternions um, and the rest is crude data. The most important part of this project is the control theory. Basically, control theory is a way to make your system respond in a specific manner according to your needs. In a system, there are some unwanted disturbances like gravity and weight imbalance in our case that makes the system unstable. And then there are some control inputs that we intentionally feed to the system so as to reduce these disturbances. And then there are some states and state variables. Now there are different techniques to achieve this according to the complexity of the system and the most common technique is the PID control. Well PID is a controller that takes the error signal and converts it into a command by approximating it as the sum of proportional, integral and the derivative errors, uh, basically the PID, so that when we feed this command to the system, the error goes down as the time progresses. Now how good your system performs depends on how tuned your gain values are and that in itself depends on how you have modeled the system. We have modeled a system as an inverted reaction wheel pendulum and try to keep the model as simple as possible so that we don't have to waste much time in determining the optimal gain values of the controller. Now by default, the bike is an unstable system, that is, it falls on the ground because of the torque due to its weight. And our motive is to counterbalance this torque using the reaction wheel. For example, if the bike falls clockwise on the ground due to the clockwise torque of its weight, we want the reaction wheel to also rotate clockwise. And since the reaction wheel is rigidly attached to the bike, the bike will experience a counterclockwise torque. Now we need to model the system so as to generate the appropriate torque that will eventually balance the system. So we wrote the differential equation of the bike under the influence of reaction wheel and gravity and we approximated the reaction wheel torque as the proportional and derivative of the tilt angle which is basically the error in our case. And here we are getting the tilt angle from the IMU sensor that is attached to the base of the bike. Now to stabilize the system in the least possible time, we want to achieve the critical damping condition where both of our state variables that is the tilt angle and the derivative of tilt angle reduce to zero and our thought is that we will eventually control the bike as soon as the bike is left standing so that we can assume that the tilt to be approximately equal to the sine of the angle that is the sine theta can be approximated as theta. And after applying the critical damping condition, we got a relation between Kp and Kd. 
and now we calculated the command that is the angular velocity that we will feed to the motor to generate the appropriate torque and we'll keep feeding the command as a function of error and its derivative unless both the state variable go down to zero now we need to find the optimal kp and kd values for generating the command but as you could see in the relation there is an another term that is the moment of inertia of the bike that we need to calculate now finding this value theoretically is not easy so we try to find it practically we let the bike fall under the influence of gravity only and collected the data of tilt angle as a function of time within the range where we could approximate sin theta as theta and we again solved the differential equation of the bike under gravity and after doing certain approximations we got a relation between the moment of inertia of bike and the tilt angle from which we calculated the moment of inertia of the bike Here you could see the plot of tilt angle versus time that we used to calculate the bike's moment of inertia. Now we need to play with the KP and KD values of the bike and look at the best results. And even after doing all this, we had to make many adjustments. And we tried to see if our method works or not in the simulation first. And here are the results of the simulation process. In the very first part, you could see the very weird behavior of the bike. and this is because at this instant we haven't modeled a bike and we want to show you the importance of modeling so that we don't feed random values to the system in the second part you could see the bike is trying to balance itself but eventually it overshoots from the equilibrium position and this is the under damping case so we need to further tune the gain values to reduce these oscillations Now in the final case you could see the bike is balancing instantaneously and this is the critical damping condition so we finally have achieved the balancing of a bike at a particular point after getting the simulation results we try to implement the same on hardware which will be discussed in the next part Hey guys this is Rajiv and I'll be explaining the electronics part and the hardware demonstration of the project we have used Arduino Uno as a microcontroller to program the bike and I am a sensor to collect the angular data of the bike and one motor driver to power the board and a dc motor the dc motor actuates the reaction wheel which will provide the balancing torque in this slide we have tried to show you how we have progressed in the project it started from the designing of the cad of the bike and then 3d printing of the parts and finally the assembly of the board along with the electronic components in the previous slides mohit has explained the modeling of the bike dynamics that we have used to program our bike here we have also used some approximations to simplify the code and then we have feeded the system variable omega to the pid algorithm the pid algorithm outputs the control variable torque which is then sent to the motor driver to actuate the reaction wheel the code snippet includes the balancing function the setup function for initialization and the main loop function this is the video demonstration of our robot we have applied an open loop control on the motor because it is a simple dc motor it's making the system less robust but after the pid tuning we have got some notable results that you may appreciate here is the video The main loop function is continuously reading the data from the IMU sensor that is current angle from the vertical and motor torque is calculated to minimize the angle utilizing the reaction wheel mechanism the bot is trying to balance vertically and hence performing to and fro motion note that the system has pd control and the oscillations can be minimized by increasing the derivative gain on finer tuning this project includes the mathematical modeling learning about electronic components and their integration with the hardware throughout the duration of the project we faced many challenges and we have listed some of them and we request you to address them before coming to the judgment of the project 
because they may give you some insights of the problem one can encounter during a hardware or instrumentation project the first one you can say is component acquisition we couldn't get the required motor to get the desired torque at a given speed so we used a dc motor and as you know that uh, we can only use it in an open loop control mode and second one is problems in 3d printing of the parts followed by the pid tuning part which is kind of labor extensive and finally mass of the battery which increased the inertia of the bike by a lot and hence we got large values of proportional and derivative gains so this was a short summary of our project hope you liked the video we have attached some links in the description for reference including the github repo of the bot Feel free to give your review on the project and if you have any suggestions or want to make any contributions then you can check out our github. We thank you for your time. Have a nice day ahead.